bought a whole bar of these pick toothpicks at the dollar store. And then uh, they're not all the same, of course. So what I do is I go through them to find out which ones are the thickest and the roundest because some of them are a little bit, uh, you know, um, ovally because they don't really care about these things, but I find the thickest ones. Then, oops, not like that. Then we take a, a cutter and cut it off at the thick part and uh, stick it in a hole which fits nice and tight. These fit perfectly in these uh, pick guard screw holes. Fit like that. Then I take this and I mark it on the inside where it's going to be underneath the pick guard if I get a little bit of ink on there. Then what I'll do is I'll end up cutting that plug just shy of where the mark is so it will go at or below the surface so it doesn't make a hump under the pick guard. And then I can take that and drive it in with a little bit of glue. And, uh, and you're going to get a little bit of this on your fingers. So what I do is I just squeeze it up. I dip it in. Get it all the way around the corners because when you push that in the hole it's going to push some of it up. Like that. And then you can push it down. Take the other toothpick to push it in the hole have your wet cloth close and boom one done just like that the rest I'll do by myself okay so that only took a couple of minutes and so I decided to fill them all except the one that lines up and uh, that used two toothpicks with this tiny little piece left over so it's very cheap to fill these holes like that with a little bit of glue. So yes, I will now need to uh, let that set up before I start drilling anywhere near where these uh, where these are. I've decided uh, it's time to start thinking about putting this together. Now, these wires to the jack are quite long. Way longer than they, they need to be. Since the jack is, you know, really close by. And to get this panel out and take a look, I mean, they only have to be about maybe this long. So I'm thinking about cutting them down because I could even put it all the way over on the table like that if they were a little bit shorter. And I'm twisting them. Since these are now not noiseless pickup uh, for the bridge, that's a humbucker. And when I split the humbucker, which will be the normal condition on this guitar, it uh, will be single. Susceptible to noise, and as you can see, I didn't do all the shielding and the like in here. I want to see what it's like before I, I go ahead and do any further mods to it like that. So I'm just going to, uh, twisting is for noise, stopping the noise, <clears throat> pick up on the, uh, on the wires. I mentioned that before. So we're just going to put tie wrap to hold that in the twist. And if I was to go all the way down there like that, I can still get it up here. And this will hold them in a twist. Keeping the noise cancelling. Which is really signal cancelling. Okay. <clears throat> So if 
I get the wires a little shorter, I won't have to contend with uh, a lot of it sitting up underneath the uh, plate. There. Okay, that's good enough for the jack. The pickup wires, on the other hand, I'm, I'm not inclined to want to cut them anymore because they're just about like that. This one is, is quite long, but it's got the jacket, so... And, and these, they always wrote this so that the uh, pickups come wires and uh, the uh, shield ground wire for the bridge. They all come out on this side, which is right around where the switch has to fit in. And then you have this, eh, I'm not doing it. And I now have my, uh, I'm just going to bend this capacitor a tiny little bit, my treble bleed circuit for the neck pickup up on the switch there. Now I do need to get, I do need to get from there to there with this. And that goes there, and that one goes up there, and that one's not going to go there. So I guess I'm going to have to make a small jumper because, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to cut the sheath back any further than it is. It's nicely finished here with that uh, shrink tubing. So what I think I'm going to do, this is the, this is the tap, tap coils. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get my shrink tubing. I'm going to put a sheath over this and uh, I'll probably take one of these little pieces that I cut off here and just make it reach over here to the, oops. Oh my, reach over here to the switch on the bottom terminal um, the bottom terminal which is actually up there the bottom top um, because when the switch is in it's connecting this terminal to that terminal and that will take the tap coil run it through the resistor to ground so in the in position it's going to be the reverse of what it normally is you usually split it when you pull it out well I'm going to keep it split when it's in because it's a telecaster style <clears throat> and it'll be single single um, and then when you pull it you'll go back to full humbucker because then it's going to uh, take the middle one and put it up to the top lug over here which won't be connected to anything and then that means the tap coil is open and it'll go into full humbucker so that's the way it's going to go And this is my shield wire. It's turned out to be just about the right length when I cut it originally. I wish it was a little bit more of a flexible wire. It's quite a rigid 18 gauge wire. But that's all I have for stranded. So that's what I'm going to use. Alright, let's get some insulation off of these. Maybe a little bit more there. Come on. You gotta be so careful with these things because they'll go through the wire like nothing if you squeeze a little bit too hard. So this has to go on to the terminal two of the volume pot. I'll pre-tin that and it'll be able to go on quite nicely. What else needs it? Oh, take this off. So this is neck pickup positive, neck pickup negative. And we're going to tin the ends of those as well. I tin them all. Well, these are already done. This could be used a little bit more. And I've already tinned all the lugs except for the one that's going to be used all the time. <laughs> Forgot to do that one while I was there. Come on, stop doing that. All right, solder. My little roll of solder. And uh, the iron is hot. So I'm going to do the switch here first. Put a little touch there. 
Put a little touch there. A little touch there. It's going to need a bigger touch. Heavier your gauge wire. I want to infuse the solder into the strands. That way it will melt into the ground on the back of the pot. Much better. All right, Donless, get your touch up. Good, let's just make sure we did a good job on that one. Is that all of them? That's good. This yellow one is not as good as it could be. There we go. All right. Uh, what should we use? Should we use the red one? Yeah. Already has some tinning on the end of that. See, oh, I got some solder on there already. Good. Shrink. Shrink. Let's use a. Let's use a little piece of red. All right, so we're going to cut it off right about there. That'll be good enough. I have my support table with some things on it right behind me. All right, so we just have to slide that down. here. This reminds me of that uh, uh, Robocop ro uh, uh, robot that they had that had the big uh, machine guns through there in, in both of his uh, arms. That's what that re reminds me of when I look at it. That holds nicely. Glad I ran into that at the store the other day. I lost my little piece of wire. There it is. All right, let's melt them together. Then the sleeve will move over it like that to pull it up. It comes tight then. Now we can just get it to shrink down by touching it. Oh, lost a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you want it on the joint. A little bit on both sides, and then that'll just hold it on that joint that it won't come off. And that makes it good enough to be able to reach. Thank you, robot. <laughs> So some people might find all this, you know, a little bit confusing, but it's really easy. Don't be intimidated by this kind of stuff. It's not that difficult. You know, like there's your neck, and there's your bridge, and there's your jack, and there's your your ground wire. So, I mean, it's not, not that difficult. And if you can <clears throat> read, you know, you can, you can get wiring diagrams off the Internet, um, and it'll tell you, you know, it'll show you this look, this setup. Probably not with this uh, push pull, but similarly, and you know you just face your pots together, you jump them together like they show you on there, 
and you just have to, you know, it'll, they'll, they'll show you where to put the, the positive and the negative on there. They'll show you where to put those two. They'll show you, you know, anywhere on the ground, and then your jack output is going to be ground to the volume. It's like, it's, it's, it's child's play, really. No reason to ever get intimidated by doing stuff like this. And in fact, this is the drawing right here uh, that I've done <clears throat> for mine. And uh, just so I can remind myself where I'm putting uh, the, these things up there, I always make myself a diagram in advance. Doesn't mean I always do it perfectly, but <laughs> I find out in the end <laughs> and I fix it. Because it wouldn't be the first time that I would have miswired something in my lifetime. Okay, so what's the easy ones? Easy one first is probably going to be, well, uh, let's get the jack one done. Because it's right there. I'm just going to slip it underneath there. And I'm going to, whoop, don't burn your fingers. And I'm going to tack that right on there. I need a little bit of this. Beauty. The black can go to the ground right there on that lug. Since there's a hole there for it, little eyelet, it's not filled yet. I've had requests for showing more of the soldering wiring stuff so this is fulfilling that request all right that can go anywhere at the end okay where am I gonna put my my, my all right so the bridge can you see that in there uh, barely right too close so the bridge black as ground goes to the back of the pot the hot the white one is going to go all the way up here to that first lug which is just now behind so similarly what I did with the jack and because these are, are are long I'm just going to give them a little bit of a twist like that because that will still be able to reach up here to there Woo, I'll hold it and still be able to hook up to a ground here and I think it can even have another twist on it to be able to make that happen like that come on get over there I don't have any fingernails and then there yeah that's gonna work okay so what do we do uh-huh use your teeth and you grab a tie wrap You don't want to have tie wraps, you don't have to have them. Not a big deal. I leave them a little bit loose so you can slip them up and down as the, as the way you need them. So you can you can have it anywhere you want. Alright, so I'm going to connect the hot first. Since the ground is right out in the open there. It'd be handy if my soldering iron was on my left hand. I did put some tinning on there, so I will just give it a, a dab on the iron because I just cleaned it off. Let's stick it in the hole. Like that. And then we're going to try to do it with our right hand. And melt it. And 
I did. And I put a small piece of uh, insulation on there so that it would not go down and ground that out with the uh, bridge pickup. Um, I was I was pre-thinking ahead because it was like you know too much bare there, and if I end up getting pressed on a wire, that could that, that could short it out. The resistor's okay. Uh, this lug down here is not going to be used, so no problem there. Now, but bridge uh, the neck pickup wires are a little bit uh, thinner. Although they did a good job with the ground one, it's uh, it's ground and shield together inside a um, shrink tubing. Now this one uh, doesn't go to ground. In order to get the series circuit, you actually have to put the common on this lug down here. And the hot goes to the second uh, lug right there where the jumper is and the a trouble bleed circuit so anywhere along there is good for the yellow one now let me see do I have do I have do I have let me get this purple one out of there so I'll bring it more down that way and do I have enough distance for there and the ground yes I do okay all right the hot first, then we just be able to do all the, the comment. Oh yeah, it goes here, not there, so no problem. Uh, I just like to see a little bit more on here. So that just has to go. Do I have a little opening there? Let me see. Uh, not really. So. just a tiny bit too long it's just a tiny bit too long all right let's see if we can get it on there melted want to see it nicely melted together all right so the black one has to go down here it's a little bit more rigid since the shield is also in there with it so she's sticking in the hole now we just need to add a little bit more solder Wait for it to melt and pull it right into there. Don't leave any little points of solder hanging out. Make sure it's cut off nice and sharp. All right, so now this one has to go down there. And I can probably cut that off a little bit here now. This is what happens when you're not careful with the, with the trimming. Choop! Right off, see? Although it didn't do a very good job of cutting every strand these are old <laughs> I, have, I have cat teeth marks in them because they, they used to chew on it my two my two boys well actually I guess it was one boy <sighs> mr. Oreo that was never seen on this channel because he died before <sighs> Just, just as I was entering retirement and before I moved to this place that I'm in now. All right, so this goes to that bottom log right there. And there is a hole in it, but it's a little bit small for this gauge of wire. So I'm going to make this end just a little bit shorter. We're going to put a little extra solder on the lug. And then we're going to attach. And 
when you see a nice flow, take it off, wait for it to cool for a second, and boom, it's good. It's just like crazy glue. Yeah, this is like electrical crazy glue. Indeed, indeed. So this ground actually goes to ground. So we can just kind of tack that to the top of the pot here and melt it in to the blob. Depends on how hot your iron is for that to happen and how fast it'll go. I just melted some insulation. because I wasn't careful. It's not going to be a major problem. We're going to melt this blob and have that ground done in there. Now, this one can also go there or here. Let's see how that works. All right, I still hang that off of there, no problem. If I put that over here, it should work okay. It'll stop too much of a glob there. All right, let me get a little bit of extra solder up on this ground terminal ground point because this is an 18 gauge flow it nice and that's it they are all connected uh, are there any issues yes this one has too much insulation showing in the back. We're going to have to shorten it up. So we'll just take it out. We're going to trim it down because that was too long. I should have noticed that initially. You push that down. I mean, it's not going to be touching anything there, but I, I want to make sure it doesn't come back and touch the other terminal because that'll cause a short circuit. This is not pushback wire. It looks like it, but it is not. Nice cloth insulation. Okay, so we'll put that back in the hole. Reflow it. Beauty. Okay. Alrighty, now, how to get all the stuff in there is the next story, because we want the stuff to go down, but not be obstructing in any way. Now I want to make sure that this pot doesn't touch anything. Oh, look at that. It's going to do it. First try. First try. Wow. Look at that. I just hope it works. I'm just going to tack this like here and there and then I'm going to go and do the tap test at the uh, amplifier which is at the other end of the basement. So before we do all the stuff we're going to up here I'm going to just go test this. Good news all works as prescribed. Center that up. Make it snug.
Okay. Okay. Can we move this up? And kind of like that. And then we'll just do the holds by hand as usual. The 15, 30 seconds. I like a small bit. Vacuum that out. So this goes in right where the plug went between the plug and the body. Not too deep. Try to get it in the center. So your screws will countersink nicely. I did this a little bit of back to make a pip and forward. This is supposed to fit a, but I get whatever I can get because I know I'm going to have to re-drill holes anyway for the colors I like. And slow, no rushing. This basswood drills uh, very easy. This again is right on the joint of the plug and the body. See me guiding the bit with my thumb and forefinger, and that's easy to do, especially since you're going very slowly. You can position it quite quite well like that. Okay, I'm gonna vacuum and not make the noise. Silver.